Yes, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well. We've got Lewis here. It's Tottenham versus Chelsea Monday night, but we thought we'd do the preview today. We did a show on his channel yesterday, so make sure you go and check that out. Um, the Poch tweets have come out from Fabrizio. How, how, like, how do you feel about the tweets and like going into this game? I won't. I won't lie. I feel like I overreacted a bit with the with the quotes. Some more I've read them. Fabrizio is naughty, naughty guy for what he did, because he's mashed up about four or five quotes to make him look a lot worse than it really sounds. In reality, like he's not said anything that deep. He said Spurs are a good team; they could potentially be contenders. Said it's what were the actual quotes? Um, where was it? If you remember me, clubs I wouldn't. Never Arsenal, the worst enemy in Barcelona. I think he's talking about clubs will never manage Arsenal and Barcelona because of Espanol. It's strange to be back. It's going to be a happy day. That is life. We need to move on. We are professional about football, but we are human. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring up. He's actually screen. not said anything wrong. Like it's, it's not the that deep. He pushed out. He's pushed out three or four tweets. That that there's like three or four bits. Poch has said in there. He said the only teams I'd never manage are Arsenal and Barcelona. It's a strange feeling to come back to Spurs after four years, but it's going to be a happy day. I feel Spurs can really win the league. They're doing an excellent job. Just on that tweet he's put in there, like I know it's three or four in one. Like, How do you feel about your manager coming out saying he feels Spurs can really win the league? They're doing an excellent job, and it's a strange feeling. Like, Do you think it will be a happy ending for Potts, or do you think... I mean, you man are still booing him out of the ground regardless. I low key feel like he's he doesn't he doesn't want that reception as well. But I don't think he said anything that deep with it. Like the real quotes of that is like yes on being genuine Premier League tile contenders. They and are doing a fantastic job. Very good players. Very good team. Of course, it's early, but they are showing the quality to be contenders. I mean, yes. I, don't, I don't understand what he said is bad there. Yeah, he's not said anything bad. Like I'll be real, I overreacted when I saw this. This is just BS, though. Fabrizio has just tried to make Poch look bad, and he's just put him um, up for a lot of stick from Chelsea fans with this. I'm, I'm not, I'm not rising to that no more. I'm not doing that. Mm, it's interesting, isn't it? Because like, um, there, there's, there's a, he said something else as well. There's another tweet he's put out. Um, he's come out and said, um, "I didn't receive a proposal from Spurs." I'll bring this one up as well. I don't know if you've seen this one. Um, I didn't receive a proposal from Spurs to return last year. It was never discussed. After we finished our relationship with PSG, we wanted to be one year away from football. We got a contact by Chelsea and we decided to move there. He's moved to the football club that sing they hate us every single game. And we hate them. I've got listen, I've got no I can't I don't respect this guy. Like, yeah, he took us to he took us to the Champions League final, he put us in a title race with you lot. I remember uh, the Battle of the Bridge when it was like, I think no Premier League games had that amount of yellow cards. Yep. You know, we, we've lost to you in a final when JT and I think it was, who was the other striker? It was JT and someone else. We lost 2-0 oh, in the Costa, league final. Costa. Yeah. Like they, they, for me, you don't go, if, you, if you're managing Tottenham, you do not go and manage Chelsea. Like, you just don't do it. See, I, I hear it, but I think when Potts leaves Chelsea, all those feelings you're going to have right now will disappear. It's only because he's the Chelsea coach. Like, realistically, Potts hasn't said anything negative about Tottenham in his entire time here. Like, I've seen Jose Mourinho go to you guys. I've seen Conte go to you guys. I still love them. Doesn't change anything. I'll be real. Seeing to Jose in a Tottenham shirt hurt. That hurt a lot. Conte, I was kind of numb to it by then because of Jose, but that hurt a lot. But I still never really hated him. The guy's our greatest ever manager. Potch has given you a lot of mem a good memories. Obviously, yeah, but I, I think, trophies, I think but you I can think say you watch your best football more. with Potch up until the Angie era. And all yeah, a hundred percent. But I feel like he's embedded into our core more for Ch for Tottenham to not like Chelsea because of the amount of trophies you've won in recent years, rather than the other way around. I feel like Chelsea look at Arsenal and Man United more than they look at Tottenham. I know, like, you sing you hate us, but I don't think you actually really do hate us. 
Oh, no, 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 no. no. Chelsea fans really do. Me, myself, yeah, I hate Arsenal. Like, if you look at the last 20, 30 years, you, you've beaten us a lot. You, you've beaten us a hell of a lot. That's so, why like, it surprised me that it's Tottenham that we despise. Them. But if you go to the ground, that's Tottenham. Tottenham and Liverpool are the two most hated by, I'd say, match-going fans. Because they're the mm. ones that get chances about the most. Like, it's yeah. genuinely surprised. But, like, I... I don't think Chelsea fans hate Jose anymore. I've never really heard anyone speaking about Conte in general. I never heard any abuse towards Conte while he was at Spurs either. So I feel like you can distinguish the two just based on how they've been at your club and how they speak about your club when they're at the rivals. And Poch hasn't said nothing bad about you guys. I know your fan base got annoyed with his first interview where he said, Chelsea have been the biggest club in England in the last 15 years. But I mean, we won the most trophies since 2000. He, he's not wrong. He just said a fact. He hasn't said nothing negative about Spurs. If he does, I get it. I totally get it. Because then that's snake behaviour. But signing for the rivals, like, did that other Fabrizio quote say, say, um, say he was waiting for Tottenham? Or did I get that wrong? Uh, no, it says, uh, I never received a proposal from Spurs to return in the last year. It was never discussed. But he still could have been waiting for you guys. Yeah, I, I, I like. I know. I know it's good to say now, but I think I, I'm never really a huge fan of going back to managers or going back to like players returning to football clubs. Like when Bauer returned, it was great, but it's never the same Gareth Bale, is it? Like, let's be honest. What about Defoe? Because he had that little spell at Portsmouth, didn't he? Defoe's the only one. Defoe and, and Defoe's probably one of the only ones. But like we had Drogba just come back to just ride bench and win a league title, and it was still vibes. All he just came in was like one literally Jose was like, yo, we just need a little bit of experience, come here, get another league title, and peace. No complaints, just came off the bench a little bit, scored in some cup games, got two trophies. It's that mentality bounced. in the dressing room, isn't it? Like he's a leader. But on on Chelsea, so you won you played midweek against Blackburn. Obviously, we haven't. Um by the time Monday comes around, it would have been 10 days since our last Premier League game. Um, you actually, against Arsenal, were a better team for probably 75 minutes. Should have won the game. You, you, you Probably your best football you've played under Poch. Well, in fact, it was, let's be real. Yeah. Um, you then lost uh, seven days later at home to Brentford, which I didn't see coming. I thought you'd kick on and you'd go and win. But you have this knack of no matter what form you're in, how many games you've won or lost, whenever it comes to playing us, you normally raise your game. Like, do you think, because I'll be like, shamelessly, I think, like I said to you last night, I, I can't, you know, I cannot see us losing this game. I know like it's Chelsea and I know they're massive football club and they always, they always lift their spirits in that. But do you think you can, coming off the back of this Blackburn win, do you think you, because you've got tough games, man. You've got Tottenham, City, Newcastle, Brighton, Man United. Then not shortly after that, you got a quarter final against Newcastle. Like you need to now start picking up performances, don't you? Do you think you can get something out of this game? Well, if what Poch, what Poch said after the Brentford game is true, then we should, because he said he wasn't worried because we played well against the likes of Arsenal and Liverpool, but we suffer against a deep block. I don't expect you to play a deep block. I expect you to come out and play with confidence. So we should have a better performance. I shouldn't be worried as a result of that. Obviously, you guys are going to come in as favourites. You guys are going to come in as a better team, but you guys play in a way that suits us. And it's all going to come down to, from a Chelsea perspective, can we score first? That's going to be the biggest question. If Tottenham score first, I think the game's done, personally. But if we can get the first goal, you just have to not do any stupidness at the back. But... I remember you told me that, what was it, Tottenham have scored the most goals in the last 15 minutes of the game? Yeah, we're one of the highest scorers in the league in terms of the last 15 Yeah, minutes. we concede the most in the last 15, so that's not really ideal. Poch has to make every single substitution count. So there's a lot of ifs. There's a lot of ifs. If we score first, if we can shut you guys out, um, if we don't make any stupid decisions at the back, but... I do feel quietly optimistic for this game. Just because it's not a deep block, I feel like there's a little bit of hope. But obviously, like, you guys are still favourites. Mm. Do you think you'll play a similar lineup that you played against Arsenal? Because you played 
<coughs> Sanchez, uh, well, it'll probably be Sanchez, James, Silva, and then I'm not sure he's going to go left centre back and left back. Caicedo, Fernandez, Sterling, Gallagher, Madrid, Palmer. Do you think it'll go similar to that? Maybe Madrid starts just because Boldo, he's only just got back to, fo- to first team training, so I don't really know how ready he is. I bring James back. I think Silva does come back into this game. That, that's Maybe. a lineup you played against Arsenal. Okay, so Silva stays in the lineup then, but I might put the Sassy in over Colwell. Um, other than that, yeah, I'd play Mudrick if he's ready. If he's not ready, then I guess Jackson comes back into the lineup. If he's ready, I'd bench Jackson. Everything else I'm fine with. What about, like, so the bench you, you had, obviously, we know um, Nani very well. You've got Jackson, Rhys James, Diassi, Badashile. Would you think there's a problem with your goalkeeper situation? Not really. Like, Sanchez just needs to be better with his short passing. Everything else has been fine. Long passing looks very good at times. He's a great shot stopper. Comes out and collects crosses. Just does a little stupidness at the back every once or twice a game. Um, But nah, I don't even know about Petrovic. We haven't seen him play once. So I can't even really judge him. But I I wouldn't say we have a goalkeeping problem just yet. We had a bigger goalkeeping problem last season when it was Kepper and Mendy. It was like two cheeks of the same ass. Now it's just like I don't really know what I'm dealing with. <laughs> so we've got um obviously we played against Palace on the Friday. I think we'll we'll basically play the exact same lineup. I think it will just be uh you doggy sh- well, your doggy apparently is 50-50. I thought he'd start. Um and it will be Johnson instead of Richarlison. Benton Call will be on the bench. I think our defense. With Van der Ven, Romero, Poro, and if he's your doggy, should be fine. You don't score a lot of goals. Bissouma, Saar, and Madison will be an interesting batting against, battle against Caicedo and Fernandez. Um, but I just think this game is going to be won on if they're spacing behind. If you leave spacing behind for Son, you know, Thiago Silva's 58 year old legs and Colwell aren't going to cope. If you if you sit out and play a counter attacking game, which I think you will, then I think Mudrick's going to be. I think if he does play, he's going to cause us problems. Definitely, that's why I'm hoping he's ready. Plus, I low key feel like I'd back him more in front of Golden Jackson right now. Jackson does not seem confident at all. Now I say that a goal against Tottenham would do a lot for his confidence, but it just hasn't looked good the last few games at all. And, like, I know he's young. He'll get better. He'll improve and everything. But as of right now, I think I'd rather have Cole Palmer up top. That guy can't do any wrong. Constantly carrying this attack on his back. Do you think and he's I been think your best had... performer this season? Um, You could make the argument even this early. Who else would be up there? Maybe Caicedo. Sterling. Gusto. Sterling's been a bit inconsistent. Um, Maybe. In terms of just outright performances, probably he would be our player of the season already. This early. Like, I'm amazed with his maturity, his decision-making. Barely puts a foot wrong. Every game is at least an 8 out of 10. Insanely talented on the ball in terms of his IQ, his pressing off the ball. He, He might be the guy that we build the team around. He really might be this early. So I'd rather have him up top. Was you a bit like when because when you signed Palmer, it kind of come out of nowhere. There was like no long term links. It was just kind of wrapped up in like two weeks, wasn't it? You got him, you agreed the fee, job done. Like, was you like, did you really need to bring in another forward, or would you rather have brought in another midfielder and a, a defender? Nah, midfield's fine to be honest. Like, our biggest problem is up front. We need more experience there. Which I guess, like, we've learned that with time. At the start of the season, the idea was to give Jackson six months and see where we're at with him. We need experience. We've got to that conclusion. That is fine. Jackson can still have all the time that he needs. Just we need experience to at least get us into Europe. Then when we're in Europe, you can give Jackson the... If we're in the Champions League, God willing, we can rot- rotate him in that, depending on the fixtures. If we're in the Europa League or Conference League, give Jackson all the group stage games. 
that can be his little place to develop. He can be our little Giroud or something. Just get top goal scorer in the Europa League again. But as of right now, we need more. We need more. That's the number one place where we need to sort where we need to sort um ourselves out in January. Although we're looking for centre backs too, which surprises me. We want one as a well, challenge. We were linked basically. with um we were heavily linked with Gallagher and um I can't remember what the centre back's called now. Um Chalabar? Yeah, Chalabar. Do you regret like selling Gallagher? Like, do you regret not selling him or would you rather have kept him? Because nah, I think he's been half decent. Yeah, he's improved a lot this season. If anything, he's probably raised his price tag as well. I wouldn't sell him unless we need to, because like the whole idea is selling Cobham players is straight profit on the FFP books. So if we have to, I guess so. But Trevor Chalaba should do that anyway. Mm. He's not getting any game time. He's not going to get any game time. He's our fifth choice centre back. We play one game a week. So get rid of him. That should be enough. I wouldn't mind keeping Gallagher. Even as a squad player, I think it would be fine because once Nkuku comes back into the team, I'd expect him to be the one that drops to the bench. Or even Jackson, the way he's playing. But I think as a squad player, perfect. Perfect option for us. And he might even improve on that. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually, I look at this. There's so much. You've got so many talented players. You just need, it's just, it, it's everyone's coming out saying, oh, Chelsea need to get top four, this and that. That's a huge job for Poch. Like, we know Poch has got a good track record at building up young players, but you've signed so... I mean, what have you done? One billion in three windows. And your fixtures aren't getting easier. Like, I don't want to plant the seed, but do you think if you go on, if you go on another bad run, serious questions have got to be asked? Because these yep. fixtures are disgusting. Hey, apparently we do better against these sorts of teams. So to and me, before that, like, you had Arsenal ooh. as well. So you've you've shown me you can play against the big teams. So like, why should I be shook? Like, I could be cautious. You guys are good teams and everything. I'm not gonna completely underrate everybody that we're facing. But if we're meant to perform better against the big teams, then I expect results against the big teams. Right, so, so you're playing. You're playing. Everton away, the way Everton have won a couple of games recently. Like, how, how many points really? I'm actually very concerned about that one. That Sean Dyche low block against Poch. Oh, it's gonna oh, be dear. disgusting. He's gonna stink oh, it dear. out. That that is the most blatant one nil Everton in history. So, how many points are you get in your next six games? I mean, I'd like to say we beat you guys, but I need to see it. City, just uh, pray to God, pray to God. Newcastle. Nah. Oh, going away to Newcastle. I could see a result against you guys. I could see a result against Brighton, United. Well, you mean a result as result. in a win or a draw? I'm I'm going to say win. I'm going to be a little bit optimistic and say win. Because I feel like Brighton would play the way that we would want them to play. And like, there's still holes in that team. City, like, they can play whatever they want. They're still going to win. Doesn't matter. Going away to Newcastle is going to be a hard ask. United are shit. I'm tired of our record. Sorry, mm. I'm tired of our record against United. Like it's it's time to end that. Yeah, I don't think you've beat them in what four years. Yeah, since 2018, that was our last win in the league. Yeah, I, I was going to say it's been like our last away win was 2013. This is what I think you'll get. Right, I don't think you'll beat us. I don't think you'll beat City. I've got I've got a feeling you'll get a draw against Newcastle. And I think you'll beat Brighton and Man United. I don't, I, if you beat us, I'll be absolutely saving if you beat us. I wouldn't blame you. Because you're Used in the mid table pit. Chelsea at home. I'd be fuming too. 53 games unbeaten. Three years today. 2020. Third, uh, the 3rd of November 2020 was the last time Ange lost at home. Right, we are not losing. He's not losing his 53 game unbeaten record against you lot that are in the pits that I've got our old manager and are sitting 11th or 12th in the league. I would be absolutely fuming. Hey, like Poch said, it'll be a happy day. It'll be a very happy day. Yeah, it'll be a happy day for Ange. Um, if you look at our fixtures though, we've actually got some we've got some tough games coming up as well. We've got you lot, these are our next six. You lot 
Wolves, Villa, City, West Ham, Newcastle. I think we beat. I think we win shamelessly. I can't believe I'm saying this. If we stay injury free, I think we win all four of those home games. So us, Villa, West Ham, Newcastle. Because Newcastle, uh, West Ham. You guys are, are both... top of the league. You should have that confidence. I hear but, it. But West Ham and Newcastle have both got Europa League and Champions League in and around that. And Newcastle have got a win to, to stay in the competition. And West Ham lost their last Europa League game. If they lose another one, who knows? Man, Man City, I'm going to. Um, we've got a good record against City, but not. I don't know how we're going to. We, we've got a good record when we play stinky football. Villa, everyone knows how I feel about Unai Emery. I think he's one of the. Oh, I think he's so underrated. And then Wolves away. They recently, in the last couple of weeks, beat City. So they're going to have their towers up. But I, I'll be honest. I think, I think we'll get. 3, 6, 9, 12. I think we get 13 points out of, our, out, of them, out of them games. I'm guessing you think the points are dropped at City. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I don't blame you for thinking that. You guys are top of the league. You should have that confidence. Villa, will, it's not an easy run, though. It isn't an easy run. But if you make it out right, of mate, that... Give me, two, give me two seconds, man. Someone's at the door. Yeah, no worries. But if you guys make it out of that, then yeah. I, I would understand you guys having the confidence to think you're title contenders. You just better have a good window in January. Um, yeah, guys, keep hitting the likes and everything. Let me know how confident you are for the game on Monday. From a Tottenham perspective or a Chelsea perspective, let me know your score predictions. I might go for a little jammy 1-0 Chelsea. Always bet on the De Sassi header. Always bet on the De Sassi header. Let me know what you guys are saying, though. Um, man said Chelsea need to watch out for the goal machine Richarlison. On oh, my life, if Richarlison scores, that would be typical Chelsea, though. Actually, no, Richarlison assist because we gave more pie one, and that brother stinks. 2 0 Tottenham, a couple 3 1 Spurs. That, that's the result I'm a little bit worried about. If you score first, I think it might be a 3 1 thing. 3 3 Richie and Gallagher hat tricks. I don't know what you took today, bro. <laughs> Big up, though, my guy. Tottenham 2, Chelsea nil. Son with both goals. 1-1, one, one, says Chloe. Big up, Chloe. How would you feel if Richarlison scores? Brother, I'd feel the same way I felt last week. Just maybe a bit worse because it's Richarlison. I'm going to have to deal with fucking Henry on Capital Conflict on the Tuesday after that. What was that about Richarlison? Yeah, oh, man, so how would you feel if Richarlison scores? 3-0. Yeah, you're still running the 3-0 thing. 100%. Oh, Three, I reckon boy. Son will score, Richardson will score, and Madison will score. I think you underestimate our defence. Our defence is good. I think you That's probably one of our better areas. Son, Aldo, Mascoin, and R9, mate. R9, bro. Like, you had me all the way to the last one. <laughs> uh, but 3-0, that's a terrible result if we let that happen. I'd expect, like, as long as you don't score first, at least one or two in that game, maybe we can see the late because we're very capable of that. But early on, we should do well. First 20, 30 minutes, we're always as well. We, we, we've only scored three, more than three goals once this season. And that's Burnley away. We've been 1 5 2. We haven't scored more than two goals in any game. I think that's the only game where we scored four this season. Burnley just pants like that. Yeah, I, I just, I've just got a feeling, you know, I've just I've just got a feeling that this is going to be, I've got a feeling we're going to win and then we'll, we'll, we'll kick on again. Like, I, I don't know why, I don't know why, what's given me this confidence because I know deep down we're still Spurs and it could all go to pot with one or two injuries. Because we've had years time. of crap football and now Andrew's just walked in. Yeah, it's, it's mad. Like you're walking it's on water. I hear it though. It's a great feeling. Can you, can you what what would be worse for you? Tottenham winning the Premier League or the Champions League? Because you're the only London team that's won the champs, aren't you? Probably like just either. Either, really. They're both like probably the Champions League, because I think nothing beats winning the Champions League. I felt I was winning both mul multiple times, but the Champions League is a different feeling. So I'd say maybe Tottenham winning the Champions League, but it could it could be either in all honesty. 
Although if it was Spurs and Arsenal both going for a title, I already know who I'm picking. And reluctantly, for the greater good, you might have to do the job. Anybody but Arsenal. Anybody but Arsenal. Do you think they've, just got, they've got the most unbearable fan base? Plus, they're everywhere. They're like herpes. I only know like a couple Tottenham fans. I was yeah, say, I, I don't know. It's not that deep. I know, Arsenal, like... though, I have to leave the country for the summer. I can't be here. <laughs> Straight up, I'm going. I've already said if Arsenal ever come near a Premier League or a Champions League, I'm booking. I'm booking flights to Dan for about a month, and I'll be back when all the heat's died down. And it probably still won't have died down. That is bad for football culture in England. Spurs, I, I don't care too much. Just fuck Spurs in general. Mm. Uh, but yeah, you've got. So you've got. So you and in December, what's your December game saying? So you got Wolves, Luton, Fulham, Palace, Sheffield United. Fulham. You've had relatively easy for December, you know. It's not bad. It's just I, I, I smell a couple low blocks. And do I you need think, to see do you think Poch can, Do you think Poch can be the guy to get you back into winning Premier League titles? Uh, like deep down in your core, do you think he has it in him to win a Premier League title with Chelsea? I need to see more. I need to see more. Like, obviously, there's still time for him to do it, but, like, he hasn't moved me too much in the first couple of months. If anything, I've questioned a lot of what he's done. I don't know if he's him. I don't know. We'll find out. And I hope he does um, change the way I think about him. But for now, it's like, nah. Nah. Like, maybe the, I can see individuals improving their ability, but in terms of the mentality in terms of the lineups, the game management. I ain't I ain't with him right now. I ain't there. I ain't there. Cause I, I look at it and just think like he 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 got us into a, a title race with sorry, there's people coming out on Dan knocking on the door with leaflets left, right, and center. I think um I think he got us playing some of the best football I've ever seen in my life. And he got us going toe to toe with you lot toe and toe with Leicester, you're going to put more money in than anyone. But it's got to be, you can't just, like, throwing a billion pound over three windows, you've got to get back into Europe because if you don't, I don't see, like, the long-term how you can justify it. If you don't get in the Champions League this season, you can't go and then do another three, four hundred million in the summer. If if we don't make the Champions League, we have to be in the Europa League just so we can run through that league and get UCL the next year that way. And get a trophy on top. Like, we you can't be doing Europa League. League, Europa League you? Oh, yeah, yeah. We love the Europa League. Last last time we were in there, we went on the, I Haven't think you been we in it twice league? and won it twice? Yep. The first time we lost to Ruben Kazan. The second time, we, we just ran right through that competition. I know it's, bit, it's a bit more competitive now, but I'd still expect us to be able to do it, especially with where the squad should be in a year's time and the extra money we should be spending after that too. But Champions League is the aim. Europa League, like, I'm not going to accept it, but I'll be like, okay, I guess there's two routes to the Champions League next year. We can take that. I still expect the team to be in a position where we should hopefully be contending for the title as well. That should be the plan. So we'll have to see. I want us to get Champions League. I, I don't. I think we, we've done so much damage in the first three months. It might be really hard for us to get back into that race, but it's never been about consistency in there. There's always points getting dropped in the race for top four. That's why they ain't contending for the title. So maybe, maybe we could get back into that. And if it, and if he did that, that might say a lot of, about where Poch is still taking us, but I don't know. Right I, now, I, so I just, I just think it. unless you start getting the right side, like you desperately need a number nine. It would, I, I think you need to go out for Tony more than anyone. Like Tony bring in... or Oshiman, one or the other. Not really fussed which one it is. They both give me different things. Like Tony, I think, would be a lot more well-rounded. Oshiman is just scoring even half chances. Awareness in the box is going to be a lot better. And he will score bags of goals with the chances that we make. If he doesn't, I just give up. Just stop. Just don't play with strikers anymore. Walk it into the net because clearly nothing else works. Yeah, I mean, like you... The thing is, as well, when it comes to buying number nines, you're one of the worst teams at it in the league. You've had, uh, other than the uh, drug bar and Costa, what other number nine have you bought? And you've had Andrew. 
Et, okay, so you've had you've had um Farcal, you've had Etu, you've had flipping Morata, you've had who else have you had that's Lukaku, Havertz. Yeah. That's the old regime, really. Like they didn't really buy with the manager in mind. They just bought like flavor of the month type players, and they never really fit. Like we end up getting wash players like Higuain as well, Pato, Pato, Morata, Crespo ain't no flop. Crespo ain't no flop. We can take him out of that list. Um, everybody else though, yeah, none of them made sense at the time except Lukaku. Morata sounded like it made sense. That guy's mentality was just in the pits and he couldn't score a goal to save his life. Higuain was just a panic buy. Um, Havertz, uh, board signing. Lukaku, board signing. Werner, I think Lampard wants him, but again, just an awful finisher. Um, Aubameyang, that's another guy who flopped. But I'll also maintain the fact that we didn't give Obra enough opportunities. And he would have done way more for this club than Havertz ever did. He's Shevchenko, a fantastic finisher. Like, he's a great finisher. Great finisher. It's just we had no craters and then he gets blamed for it. All Aubameyang had only nine touches. Maybe if it weren't Havertz and Mount supply and then he'd have more. But hey. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 he was I, just on the sniff. That was his fault. It was I that? think he did well for us in 3 or 4 It was a bit before my time, but I don't remember him having bad numbers. Just too much to sniff. Got caught. Now that stuff's for the fans, not the players. <laughs> now winning the League Cup gets us Conference League, not Europa. Which is like, that's a consolation goal, if you get that. Would you, let me put a scenario out there. Would you rather finish in the Conference League or out the Conference League? In. In. Like, please. You'd rather finish seventh. Because I don't know where this narrative comes from. The, the, seventh the compared to what? Finishing eighth or ninth? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, seventh. Give me the Conference League. Yeah, I, I'm the same. I don't see I don't see where this bad rep comes from that the Conference League is irrelevant. Like, we could just, even get out of group. the lower league cup and everything. But we need more fixtures. As a content creator, I need more fixtures. Fact. These midweeks are so boring, beyond yeah. belief. Yeah, I'd like more fixtures, more match days. Plus, it's another trophy. It's a trophy we haven't won. Go for it. We can be shameless as hell and sing we won it all, and we've actually won it all after that point. Like, go for it. I don't care. We can at least be shameless because we've got two UCLs and two Europa Leagues. We can we can mock a conference league and pretend it means something. We've at least got everything. West Ham doing it is like, eh, bit, bit small club minded. But that, I don't champ care. Champions of Europe, we know we are against Arsenal. They did that against us. I was like, you're speaking to the only club in London with two of them. That's shameless. And two Europas. But, but that's the thing. If we've got both of them, I don't mind. One little conference league. Why not? Why not? But I'd obviously prefer the the higher um, European competitions. Where do you think you'll finish this season? I want to say top five. I want to say top five. Because the way I look at it, City, I don't think we finish above, obviously. Liverpool, Arsenal. So that just leaves Tottenham, Newcastle and United. I think Newcastle might be a bit too much to ask. You guys, it all depends on how you lot go through the season. But if you continue where you're at, we're not finishing above you. Hell, if I you think win the your 70 points, as it is. Us. I think the top four will be exactly as it is. Yes, yeah, so our only real bet is to go for fifth. And and you got New if Newcastle get dropped out of their Champions League, though, they're kind so of back to the So who's now, then? It's Liverpool, Arsenal, you yeah, lot, City. So are Newcastle fifth? Because I'm not looking at the table to Villa, start Villa are fifth. Where's, where's Newcastle? Sixth. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That, that's the league table. Well, oh, still the top nine. Top you lot are down there. Oh, fucking hell. So um, we're, um, so oh, we're, boy. This that's is, the top this ten. This is going to be difficult. What so I mean is I need we're... Villa to go deep into the conference league. And We're already 14 league. points above you. Yeah, if you beat us, that, that might already be curtains. That'd be 17 points after 11 games above you. This game is must win. 
This game is so much. We, we cannot lose. We cannot lose. You are thousand percent losing, though. I wouldn't say a thousand percent. Listen, I, I, I can't see it, man. I cannot see. Do not underestimate us against the big teams. These are where our best performances come. Wait, this, this, you, you, I mean, I can't. Yeah, but like, in what world are we winning eight of our first ten, beating Liverpool, Man United, right? Go, go into the Emirates and getting something, which we haven't done in, in God knows how many years. And then losing to you lot. It, oh, I'd, I'd, I'd be seething, man. Hey, I've seen crazier things of your football club. I've seen much Oh, yeah, I've seen a lot more crazy things, but I just can't see it. Look, I, I, just... I get it because you're top of the league. I understand it. Like, you, you if you're not going to be confident now, when are you going to be it's confident? It's not even because we're top of the league. You lot are in the pits. We beat you I, last year when Ollie Skip scored that goal, and our eleven was was. was bro, I've seen it. crazier things happen. Like I, I've seen us lose to an Arsenal team in the relegation zone at Christmas, and get bodied all game. This was our eleven when we and beat we were like you. top three then. This was our. Like, 11 I hear it. Like I understand the chest, but do not underestimate that, us. That was our eleven. We beat you in 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 uh, February. How no, many of those last players? Last season's Chelsea does, does not count. Yeah, Doesn't but look count. at it. Four star. That is right, the Romero's most still in the team. Royale's not in the matter, team. Bro. I remember going into every preview for that game just telling you guys, I don't care how crap Tottenham are. You're having your easiest game of the season against us. And you did. We were we were crap. That's that's that I is not that, the level. Like, this team here, this exact team here that played you, only one player is still in the eleven. And that's Kulazewski. R- Emerson's on the bench. Ooh. Skip the Hoiberger on the bench. Dyer, Longley. Uh, uh, Dyer's not Romero? even R- Oh, yeah. Sorry, and Romero. Kane's gone. Richarlison should be on the bench. Davies should be on the bench. Like, and look at our bench from that game. Oh, as well. How did we get doggied by that? Oh, my gosh. You know, Graham that Potter, you are a criminal. That, that, that's your team. Kev Bar, Chilwell, Kudamali, Silva, James. Donkey up top. Right, fair enough. Yeah, that that donkey one you the champs. Don't, don't even start that. Don't <laughs> even start that. That's the narrative. This guy's won big games. Arsenal fans, and that's shameless, they're talking about Akai Havertz when he was in a Chelsea shirt. Arsenal 22, man, them cucks. But that doesn't surprise me. When has that fan base ever had any dignity? Never. Oh, yeah, 100%. That's what I always say, like, Tottenham, it's a rivalry. But, like, I'll never hate you lot the way I hate Arsenal. Arsenal are embarrassing. Straight embarrassment to this fucking city and everything. Well, I, I, everything I think it's about hilarious. that club is a disgrace. I think it's hilarious. He's their problem now. Their problem now. But that, that, that Tottenham team last season was hideous. And the way you lot battered you us in that second half, boy. They got carefree Chloe says, I don't like Henry with his chest. We're, we're top of the league for a reason. So, this Triple H... Dave Batista, Goldberg, shoulders are coming out. Hey, I, I get it. I get it. You guys are top of the league. you got to have chess now. Otherwise, when are you going to have it? It's just our job to bring you back down to earth if we can do that. There's a lot of ips going into this game, but I'm not saying we're out of it. Definitely can do something in this match. Definitely capable of it. How, how many signings do you think Tottenham are winning the league title? I'd say you need a number nine. So let's say if we hypothetically were to bring in Ivan Tony in January. Maybe a left winger. Maybe. So some will go back out on the left. So the oh, if you three... get a striker then. Okay, then maybe. So it'd be Son, Tony and Kulu as the front three, hypothetically. I don't I think, think you we... just I... need some depth after that point. I think you need a some better depth attack and some shoulder. experience. You lot would need to bring in someone who knows how to win a league title. Who's been in that position before. So, someone like what? As in, someone who's maybe see if Bale it. wants to come back for another six months. Just give him something on the cheap. Just, I just sit on the bench, just talk to the guys and everything. You might get a league tile at the end of it. We'll throw you on the last five minutes of games. You never really got your send off at Tottenham anyway because of lockdown. And there you go. Do you think Ange will win a trophy yet, Spurs? He should do. If you're already starting at this level, if he leaves Tottenham trophyless, then that is a failure on his side. Oh, 100%. Although I said that about Conte and Jose, so I don't know what you lot are capable of. You might sack him the day before a final or something. 
I, I just the thing is, we've given him a four year contract. We've just nicked Aston Villa's director. Oh, of he football, has to it? win a trophy in that time. Has to. Yeah, he has to. Has to. If not, we, there's going to be some very uncomfortable conversations on Ange. Although that is four years away too, so can't say that like it's going to happen anytime soon. Mm. So I look at us and just think like if we if we are up there in January, Levy's got to go. Levy has to go for it. He has to yeah, go he, all out for it. He has to, but then again, like what if, happens if we if have two or three points? What if he doesn't? He's not going to lose his job or nothing. Like, no, isn't the idea of Tottenham that they just need to be back in the Champions League every year? But you're you're never going to get a, you're in the next, probably in the next ten. Let's say the next few years at least, Tottenham probably will get back into Europe. So you're never going to have this one game a week where you can rest players. Right, we're not in the League Cup. If we if we are up there within five points of Man City and Arsenal in January after like 18, 19 games played. If Levy goes out and brings a number nine in, another attacking midfielder and a couple of centre-backs, then I don't, I don't see why you, to him. Then you, then I don't see why you can't put... I don't think Arsenal are that... Like, when you look at Arsenal's squad and even their depth, I don't think they're that much better than us. No, you guys showed it in the game as well. Like, you guys managed to keep hold of them and you were the better team in that second half too. But the, if the it depends on their mentality because they could, they also could just be like, hey, we're good enough to get top four. We don't really need anything that tough. Like they're saying, Ange has won everywhere, so he should be able to win with what he has. Although Tottenham fans would also say, so did Conte, so did Jose. They didn't win anything at Tottenham. So that doesn't really mean anything. But to leave, he might rest on his laurels. I low-key hope he does, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. You'll know where his mentality's at in January. That's for sure. Hold on, man. Sorry, someone's at the door again. Sorry. Which yeah, guy? no worries, brother. No worries. I said exactly. Yeah, it's about Levy. Like I, That's why I ain't got rid any slander for Ange. But he does have to win a trophy at Tottenham. He's got you at this level already. You can't still be there in four years saying, yes, we're playing good football, brilliant, and all of that. No, 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 no. You need a trophy. That's progression. That's achievement. He has to achieve something. It's our 24 Z's in the chat. Uh, big up. Yeah, I was just talking about the whole Levy and Ange thing. Thing is, as well, because I've the trophy in the next four years. Just has to. That's it. I've actually given, like, because I've, I've been obviously I've been against these owners for a long, long time, but I've actually given the owners a bit of props in what we've done in terms of some of the signings. Um, we've, we've, um, we've signed Poro, Benton Core, Kulu, Romero, Johnson, Madders, Van der Ven, your doggy. All those signings are good, but now you've got to follow it up again and again and again and again and again. Like, because obviously you've got, You've had a lot of players come out of your academy, right? Yeah. We know that in the last, what, 20-odd years, you've had lots of players come out. We've got a few talented players in the academy right now. Do you think it's worth, because I've got a divided opinion on this. We've got a player in the academy, Jamie Donnelly, right? He's a number 10. He's got heaps of talent, right? Goal scoring, creating goals. Is it? Do you think, if you've got a talented player coming out of the academy, do you bring in a number, another 10 who's ready right now that stunts the academy player's growth or bring the academy player into the first team and let him learn off Madison? Say that love, last part, you just broke up. From my so end. we've we've got an academy player called Jamie Donnelly, right? He's yeah. bag, his numbers are a joke. Do you bring in a backup number 10, right, in case Madders gets injured, who will do well or promote the youngster to the first team? Because you've done it a I'd few look, times where you've had players that are, are I'd look for experience with where you guys are at, just because like, I don't really know what to expect from that kid. Sounds like a, sounds like a good loan option, personally. But the thing is, whenever we loan players out, they like we've loaned out Troy Parrot. I don't know about five or six times now. Dane Scarlett's had a loan here, or I think he's gone to Portsmouth. A few players have gone here or there, 
unless it's a loan to a championship club that are pushing promotion, like what are you going to learn playing League One side? What are you going to learn in League Two? Okay, you're going to get more football experience. But what are you going to learn playing Lake Norian or Julian Number Way? It's probably it's probably just more yeah it's just more experience more game time, you learn better decision making in games or you deal with certain styles of play, but you would want you would likely want them to go to a team who is on the up, not a team that's fighting relegation or or another team in the Premier League that. like put, send them down to Palace or Wolves or Forest. Hell, maybe you just get another number ten and you promote him anyway. Just bring him just have him around the squad for six months. Then when you're in Europe next season, you have more opportunities to rotate. Yeah, I, I just like, I look at him and I think he's he's got all the attributes to be like unreal. Like his numbers, I know it's the academy and it's the Premier League two and all that, but his his numbers are an absolute joke. Where are you lot in the Premier League two? Uh, I hope higher you're... than we are in the Premier League one. That's for sure. So you lot are. Tenth, we're first. Oh, we, we we've scored 20, 25 and conceded five. And Even in the Premier League two, we're crap. <laughs> oh my gosh, we lost our first game. What's, in what's the women's team saying? Have you got anything for me? All right, look, J- Jamie Donnelly's numbers. I was yeah. second in the women's suit. It's always the women helping Chelsea. I swear, the men's so team the is Premier, always Premier League two, right? In the Premier League 2, this geezer's played seven games, got seven assists and five goals. Who? This number 10, Jamie Donnelly. Oh, aye, that's crazy. That's, that's what I'm saying. He like if the, the, he's only 18 years of age as well. Oh, we got we got a scout, we got Steve scouting again. What's that? Big up Steve in the chat. What's he said? He said, big up Henry Lewis. Spurs should sign Karim. I, I'm gonna put at to go new. From Galatasaray, I'm gonna have a look at him because Steve Steve is very good when it comes to scouting players. What well, he said, very good player, can play left wing, right wing, and cam in a four two three one would be perfect. Yeah, big up Steve. Hope you all, man. Do you know what? I'm a, I'm actually in the minority. I would actually like Tottenham to sign Jaden Sancho. I mean, I think Rant, Rant speaks very highly of him, but to me, he just seems like a bit of a flop. No, but I, see, maybe got, it's United, like I need to see it. If you've got a manager like Ange, who's got fantastic man management and puts his belief in you, and he, and he, he, I think he can get the Sancho at Dortmund at Tottenham. I think you can get, it, look, look, everyone said last year, everyone was cussing Basuma, everyone was cussing Romero, everyone was cussing this player, that player on a Conte, right? Romero was running 20, 30 yards out of his defensive line. Romero hasn't done that once because you put a calm person next to him and a better manager around him, right? Hoiberg's improved. He he's not, I think he's improved the last few games, right? Kulizewski's improved. Son's now bagging goals for fun. You If you put that man management around, a, he's in a toxic environment in that changing room. He doesn't want to be there. Half the dressing room is defending Tenag, half the dressing room is defending Sancho. The club are coming out and outright ridiculing him at every every minute they get. I think if you put in Jaden Sancho in and around this, someone someone said Sancho from Dortmund ain't good enough, Henry. That's the whole point. Okay, let me read out this guy's numbers because he's one of only three players in the top few, five European leagues ever to get 20 goals and 20 assists in one season. Like, Jaden Sancho is not a bad footballer. He's just not at the right team. How many times have we seen it where players... Look at um, Joe Linton. He was an awful number nine, Newcastle. Eddie Howe comes in, puts him in centre mid, and now he's been he's been unreal for them. He beat need... United 3-0 in the nine position, which is crazy. Yeah, exactly. Like, Jaden mm. Sancho, numbers in a Dortmund shirt. He's got a lot of them wages, though. That's the first thing. Yeah, the, the thing is, 300 grand a week. But I, I, I think he takes a cut to, to get, come back to London. He's a London boy. He came out of Watford Academy. Then he moved to City. He doesn't like Manchester. He's got 114 goal contributions in 130 games for Dortmund. I know. It's just that league is so fugazi. Well, like, it's, it's high line FC over there. That's that's the thing. Like I get it. Sancho was very, very talented at Dortmund. But 
can he translate it to the English game? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say not, he you know he's got a better goal to he's game not really than been in the best climate for it. Yeah, obviously it has had off the field issues as well, so he might do well at another club. But as of now, he's a flop. As of now, he's a giant flop, and I think you're taking a very big risk on him, especially of where you guys are at right now. This is very similar to Arsenal coming this close to a league title, and then they go and buy Havertz. Yeah, but just I, the I just the, the guy, the director of football we've brought in, is responsible for what Aston Villa going from. 16th to 5th because he brought in DRB. He brought in, like, in the last three years, he brought in Martinez, Cash, DRB, Buendia, Coutinho, Watkins. And the Ben came from the Bundesliga, too. Yeah, he come from Wolfsburg. Yeah, to be fair, like, I'd look, I'd look higher on defenders that do well in the Bundesliga just because, again, with the high lines and everything, if you could do really well in that league, it says a lot about you. Yeah, that's Mickey van der Viking to you, by the way. That's not van der Ven. He's That's a band of Viking, bro. I will see if he passes the Palmer test. The Palmer test? What, Daddy Long? Yeah, man, everyone's failed so far. He's he's going to, listen, he's going to be like, where's my wallet? We he's will see. The That's the day. only forward I can put my hat on and say he's going to cause you problems. Guaranteed. He might cause us problems, but Romero in the first five minutes, he's going to smash him in half. I will see if you don't get nutmegged first. It's a nice little turn just, and he ends up just slipping listen. out. I just can't see it, man. Like, you, you guys are absolutely horrendous to watch. Not against the big teams. Not Which big teams have you played? So, so you played Arsenal, you drew 2-2. And Liverpool, we drew 1-1. One, one. But those are our very good performances. Okay, very but Villa come 1-1-0. One, one, West Ham, yeah, oh, block FC one. Again. Actually, no, Villa, Villa was our crap finishing. That wasn't a great performance. It's a masterclass from Unai Emery. Would you take Ollie Watkins as your number nine? Mm, I mean, he's doing well right now, but we were linked to him at the start of the season. And all I saw Villa fans saying was that this guy is a terrible finisher. And I'm like, nope, I've, I've seen enough of them, man. I'm good. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be very keen on the likes of Ollie Watkins. I want someone that's consistently bagged 20 a season. That's like, we, we need a gun, man. Not another. He could be good. I got enough of them. I got enough yeah. of them. Ollie Watkins is coming into those years where he's coming into his prime. Like he's played, he's got 10 games this season in the league, five goals, five assists. Um, he's coming into his prime years. Like him, he's the same age as Tony. They're both 27. They're both coming into them years where they're gonna score goals. He's got um in terms of his stats overall for Villa. He's got 119 games, 45 goals and 20 assists. So it's one in two. You put better players around him, I think he'll score. I'd rather go for Tony out of the two. I think Tony's more complete, can hold the ball up better. I think he's a better finisher, set pieces. I just think I think Watkins is very good at running down the channels and running in behind. Hmm. I'd rather get Tony just because he's more well-rounded. I can get more from him because the wingers are going to develop for us too. So I'd uh, say I'd say Tony over Watkins for me. Watkins, I'm not really that keen on bringing. Yeah, exactly. He he he, he runs. Steve's right. He run, he runs and raggy. He doesn't stop for the whole ninety minutes. He's running down the channels. He's running in behind. But look, before we wrap up, because I know you've got a stream. If you send me the link, I'll, I'll redirect to it. Oh yeah, let me do that now. Then I forgot to um, ask. Bless. I know, you, I know you've, I know we've Put got wrap up private, very, very yeah. soon. But where are you? What's your score prediction? I'm going for a jammy little one nil. Score first, park the bus, protect the point, as Poch loves to say, and let's dunk on Tottenham because it's time to get results. It's time for it. I don't care about how big the opposition is. We need wins. We've we've said that we play better against the bigger teams, so do it, do it. I just. I just, for me, that would be the worst see it. result. And I understand that. I understand that. You man are top of the league. We are mid-table. I get it. I'm not thinking, I don't think you're coming here with too much chest or anything like that. I think now is, now is the time where you have to have chest. If you don't have chest now, when are you going to have it? So fair enough, but I have belief. I have a little bit of belief. Not a lot, just a bit. 
So you're going one nil, and I'm, I'm assuming you're going Palmer with the, with the goal. The sassy header, Palmer penalty. I, I don't care. Own goal. I don't care. Just get the ball in the net. Get the ball in the net because we, we struggle a lot with it. But I'm going to go. We're asking a lot from Chelsea for that. That's why I'm only saying one nil. Just a little one nil. I, oh, I'm going to be absolutely fuming if you win one nil. Because that show on Tuesday is going to be unbearable. I'm going to go 3 0. Son, Mascoigne, and R9. That, if, if R9 bags the third, that's when I leave the ground. I'll leave well, the no, ground. No, you better stay because then that fan cam is going to be electric. No, no, the, I'll be there for the fan cam. I'm just going to get my suit. There's no point <laughs> me staying. Might as well just go spark it. All right, look, where, where can um, we are going to be redirecting um, over to your stream, but where can people find you? Guys, check out Carefree Lewis G. We're live in about 10 minutes. Just need to have a little shower quickly and then we'll be ready. Look forward to it. We'll chop up the pot. What, uh, what year is that Willian shirt? 1516. Are you not? Is, is it true you're being investigated about the Willian transfer? Yeah, but it's like minor. Everyone's that I've seen some scaremongering about, oh, they're going to give us a score, um, a points deduction. Sure whatever we reported it on ourselves like all they're trying to do is be as transparent as possible they said the old regime have done this we're reporting it to you guys and you guys do whatever you need to do we'll probably get a slap on the wrist maybe a little fine or something they're not deducting points that that doesn't happen in english football the last time it happened was 2010 for portsmouth now, i think they broke ffp rules i think it was major laws or something i don't know but it had to be something serious we, we haven't done anything that deep and it was a decade ago they wouldn't mm. even know about it if we didn't bring it up yeah all right well look we are going to wrap up make sure you uh, like the video on the way out make sure you subscribe to the channel get over to lewis and subscribe we're going to be redirecting um lewis will be doing a fan cam um on friday on monday and i might maybe on chelsea fan tv i don't know yet so make sure you check that out but we are going to wrap up see you all soon thank you all for watching we are out.